going? I have no clue. I have no idea where we're going. Um, what I know is, as part of this big vacation of ours, I used hipcamp.com. I think it's how you pronounce it, hipcamp. And uh, I found a place we can dry camp on private property for 25 bucks a night. My only regret is that it's a bit far away from Newport where we have plans to do things. It's an hour away. But you know, whatever. I mean, uh, we're gonna stay here three nights and uh, we're going to uh, sleep in a field. That's all I know. That's literally all I know about it. We're gonna be in a field and there's gonna be a creek we can walk to uh, and, uh, and all that. So we're literally gonna be using the generator and the toilet here and all the facilities. All right, so we are about an hour east of Newport. And this was literally the only place we could find within Newport that wasn't already booked. Because as soon as the sun hits, everything gets booked everywhere. But you know what, I'm very grateful we're here. Look at this view. Look at that. It's a better view than anything Seven Feathers can get you. So we're dry camping in the middle of a uh, private property uh, in the meadow, as they call it. And it's uh, off hipcamp.com. It costs about 25 bucks a night to be here. Uh, so since we're all self-contained in the RV, uh, we don't have to have any hookups. So we're, we're kind of cool. I'm, I'm kind of digging this. This is called the Stargazer Meadow. And we are going to... Uh, Put a blanket out and we're going to look at the stars later tonight. Once we're done uh, setting up here, I'm going to go down to the river. We're going to take a look and, and see what she has to offer. The town we are in is called Elsie. A-L-S-E-A. -E yeah, no, I haven't heard of it either. This town has a general store, a gas station, one restaurant that closes at 4 p.m., and that is it. There is nothing else in this town. We took a stroll to the North Fork Alsi River, which is across the street to put our feet in the water. There's a small parking lot right next to this river access, but we really didn't see anyone here the entire time we were camping. It was a hot, hot day and we were an hour from the coast. The cool air comes in the area around 6 p.m. and really cools the place down, but until then, we are on our own. I gave the camera to Rose and told her to keep it on me, as I'm not normally in any of the shots. Come on, the second I take the camera off oh of you. Oh my god, you didn't get that? Everything. So why did I have to put the, got the camera off of him? Because Jane was doing something adorable and he was being boring, he fell. I was being boring and not falling into the water. <laughs> Apparently, um, she decided to put the camera on James because he's cute, but I was just too boring. The minute she moved, I fell on my ass. What the second? I fell in. Yes. I'm soaking wet. Other than a bruised butt, it actually worked out for the best. The wet clothing kept me cool until the sun went down. After our time at the river, we went back to the RV and watched birds hunting for food. Oh my goodness gracious. It's 8 a.m. and we're just waking up. I'm just kind of getting a little teary out. Let me tell you, last night, I got a little eye crusty still in my eyes. Last night was the best night of sleep I've had in camping in forever. We're here out in what it seems like the middle of nowhere and it's just so quiet. I mean, just listen. The only thing I could hear is there's a river that runs just about on the other side of these trees over here. And then on the other side of, of this fence, there's a working farm so I can hear some chickens. So it's, it's actually kind of, that's it. That's all you can hear. That's all you can hear. Uh, last night, we, uh, this, this uh, meadows they call the stargazer and we figured out why because literally I have never seen so many stars in my life. Than, uh, than I saw last night. I come from the city, so I'm used to you know, what they call light pollution. 
and then out here you don't really have any of that so I've never seen so many stars in my entire life so today uh, I'm gonna be uh, cooking some breakfast here soon I'll make some of my famous uh, diabetes bread and then uh, <laughs> Today we're going to drive south of Newport and we're going to take a look at this thing called the Sea Lion Caves. Uh, I don't know much about it except for what I see online, but everybody seems to like it. So let's see if uh, I do. <laughs> I look forward to sharing it with you. The Sea Lion Caves were a good 90 minutes from us and because of COVID, we had to wait outside. Did I mention that it was really windy? We get inside and pay $64 for the whole family to enter. I was amazed at how much we paid. It was a mixture of, this better be good, and if this isn't any good, I'm gonna be pissed. We pay our money and then we walk down some flight of stairs and then a long, long, long ramp to get to the elevator. Look at all that bird poop. That's a lot of bird poop. The elevator takes you down about 180 feet. Decades ago, there wasn't an elevator and you had to walk all the way down. The elevator lets you off and you walk down a ramp with, get this, fake rock. The sides are literally cement made to look like rock. You know, in a cave. Down the ramp, there are a few exhibits, and finally, you get to see the Sea Lion Cave in all their excitement and glory. The cave is literally filled with sea lions, sleeping. Sometimes they actually move and then fall back asleep. The opposite end of the Sea Lion Cave has a wonderful view, including that of a lighthouse. I wouldn't call it a $64 view, but it's nice. The family spent less than 20 minutes in the cave. It's kind of neat, but honestly, you may not have ever viewed this many sea lions at one time. But if you have ever been on a pier with sea lions on them, I know you've actually been closer. Do yourself a favor, save yourself some money, and skip this place. So we were driving home and we stopped off at the Missouri Bend, what's this place called? Missouri Bend Boat Slide Replacement. Completed in 2016. Don't know much about it, but it looks like fun. It looks like we could do some fishing. And uh, it looks really cool down here. So let's go, let's go down these steps. And let's take a look. We stumbled upon this place by total accident. It's a quiet little fishing and swimming hole that even has a small rowboat slide for you to get your boat down. It was quiet and empty and honestly, just nice and relaxing. Jashan decided to try her hand at fishing in this spot. I mean, what the heck? We haven't tried it yet, so let's give it a whirl. The air was nice and cool coming up off the water, and so I decided to chase Rose around and try to throw her in the river. It never works the way I plan it. Don't tell Jashan, but when she went back to the car for a minute, I tried fishing. It didn't go very well. Walk up the trail for a bit and you'll spot a few picnic tables. A great place to spend the afternoon. Back at the RV for the night, we sit, relax, and watch the bees in the neighbor's yard. Okay, so I'm literally standing in the shade because the sun is rising, of course, in the east, and it's blinding me out. It's very bright out here. So this is our last day 
to have some fun here in the Stargazer Meadow. And uh, I'll tell you, Stargazer Meadow is a perfect name because I've never seen so many stars in my life than what I see at night. I stay up till midnight just to look at all the little lights up in the sky. I've never seen so many. So it's uh, it's been uh, kind of fun. So uh, we're here uh, for our last day here to play around in Newport. Today we're going into Newport and we are going to uh, visit a couple of places of interest. Uh, I want to check out this museum that just is dedicated to telephones. Yes, that's right, a telephone museum. Uh, we're going to check out a, uh, a lighthouse and we're going to check out the Pirate's Cove kind of uh, mini mall, uh, so to speak. We, we've been there before and we had, our, we had some fun, so I'm going to uh, check it out again. Well, the telephone museum was permanently closed. The lighthouse was closed for the day. This left us with lunch and then the Pirate's Cove Mall. Oh, and laundry. We had to do laundry. The weather in Newport this day was nice and cool. You can see the fog over the bridge leading into town. I enjoy looking at the fog over the ocean. It kind of changes things up a little bit, but I find it a bit relaxing. As we're driving into town, we're also coming up with a list of things to do and slowly finding out that things are still kind of closed, not just for COVID, but for remodeling and such. The west end of Highway 20 starts here. The longest highway in America literally takes you to Boston. It's on my bucket list to travel that and back in the RV. We eat a fantastic lunch at Flashbacks, a retro cafe in Newport. Seriously, it's rather good. Pirate's Cove Mall is a series of mom-and-pop shops in Newport, Oregon. The outside has an old-fashioned pirate theme. Unfortunately, not all the shops are open due to COVID, and some of them have shut down permanently. This is more artsy. There's shops for rocks and other home decorations. It's not really corporate at all. Walking through it today reminds me why I hate wind chimes so much. The decor is colorful and bright and fun for people of all ages. The statues are fun, too. Excuse me, can you tell me where the bathrooms are? Pardon me, can you tell me where the bathroom is? Excuse me, I just, I need to know... Where's the bathroom? How rude. After our time at the Pirate's Cove Mall, we ended up at a place called the Devil's Punch Bowl, which apparently is really exciting when the tide is high. Back at the RV, we decided to take one last dip in the North Fork Alsea River. And what you're seeing here is the North American Rose. The North American Rose is known specifically for its loud, boisterous voice, as well as its inability to swim. Let's watch it in the wild.
Isn't it magnificent? We very rarely get a chance to see one in the wild, in its natural element. And here she is. As she flosses, yes, she's flossing. Yes, she's flossing. And she's twisting, twisting, as she twists again like she did last summer. I'm not quite sure what that is. It's, she seems to be in some kind of pain, I think, as she moves around. Well, in the end, teenagers end up being teenagers. After a long day, Rose and I head back to the RV so the whole family can watch their father being the greatest Uno player of all time. All right, so it's our last night here at the Stargazer Meadow, and I'm kind of sad about that because we really liked it here. I mean, look at this. We've got like five acres to ourselves. Seriously, why would we want to leave this? The weather's been really nice, but at night we get this nice... Uh, what? <laughs> we get this nice breeze uh, from the coast about an hour away. Um, and, <laughs> no, not this again. And so... Uh, <laughs> We're literally just packing up for the evening because uh, here in about an hour and a half or so, uh, the entire sky is uh, filled with every star in the galaxy. I mean, you can see so much. Um, unfortunately, of course, my camera doesn't show it off because my camera's cheap. And uh, here we are. But tomorrow morning, we're gonna wake up at the crack of dawn, at the crack of dawn, and we're gonna drive to um, someplace, Coquille. We're going to stay at the Laverne and Shirley uh, County Park. Laverne and Shirley, Shirley County Did Park. No. <laughs> it's called the Laverne County RV Park. And so we're going to be staying there for uh, two or three nights. I can't recall off the top of my head. but uh, We had a great time here. Just a wonderful time here on this private property uh, as we uh, finish up our last night and uh, literally five acres of silence because at night, let me tell you something, at night, on the other side of this, uh, of the, of this brush you see here is, all, uh, is a road. And at the end of the road is a fish hatchery. And at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the business day, people stop driving down there, so no one's going down this road. So it's completely quiet all the way around us. You don't really hear anything except for birds and, and maybe a, a bat flying around. But uh, this has been so much fun for all of us, and we've really enjoyed it. We look forward to coming back. So uh, tomorrow morning, we'll wake up bright and early, and uh, we'll see you at the new place. Kokiel? 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 I'm, not, I'm bad with names. So we just left the Stargazer Meadow. And I'm very sad because we had such a great time there, I thought. What do you think? Did you love it there? Yeah, I liked it there. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> it's great when the weather was hot and you get that cool breeze at night. So right now we're actually headed to Waldport. This road we're on is going to take us to Waldport, Oregon. And I'm going to get some gas and we're going to dump the tanks. And then we're headed to Coquille which is in the Coos Bay area, Bandon slash Coos Bay. Your mother wants to stay there because there's a wildlife safari she wants to do tomorrow. That sounds like fun. Uh, you know, it does sound like fun. Uh, she's always wanted to do it, so we're gonna do it. Yeah. Hey, kitty, say hi. Kitty, say hi to the camera. 
kitty. Say hi to the camera. All right, so we are here at Laverne and Shirley County Park. No, it's Laverne County Park. It has uh, a bunch of RV camping spots. They got spots for, for tents and, and uh, there's a river that runs out here. I'll, uh, I'll show all that to you later. Uh, now, with 21 bucks a night, the minute I hit record, people decide to start balancing their trailer. At 21 bucks a night, including tax, we get water, we get power, and there's a dump station on the site. Um, so it works out quite well for us. Uh, we're a little closer than I'd like to be, but 21 bucks a night. How do you complain too much? I mean, we were just 25 bucks a night at the Stargazer Meadow, and uh, uh, there was nobody around us for acres. Uh, but anyway, yeah, when we woke up this morning, there was a, a big, thick patch of clouds all over the Stargazer Meadow. So we left. It was like it was sad to see us go. But we left, uh, and we were sad to leave it because it was wonderful. It was a wonderful place to be. Um, so anyway, we took literally the 3,000-mile trip to get here. <laughs> it just feels longer than it actually was. And uh, here we are, we're finally here, uh, and we're finally just setting up as we speak, and then once we're done, we're gonna have a little fun, and then we're gonna have dinner. Laverne County Park isn't just about camping. There's a popular day-use area as well. The river runs on one side of the park and is used by swimmers and people fishing. We're about an hour away from the ocean, so the weather is a bit warm, but in the evening, the ocean winds come and cool everything down. There's a popular playground area for the kids, large enough for them to run around in, and even an outdoor kitchen. For dinner, we made calzones over the open fire. Very hot, very delicious. Lily decided to make her own calzone. We put the pie iron on the ground because it just came off the fire after I cooked mine. And of course it was really hot. That's regular old pizza dough that we're putting on. The rest of the ingredients are just your average pizza ingredients. Whatever you like to put on is yours. We like to put on as much meat as humanly possible. One of the key things is when you put it on the fire, don't put it directly on the fire. Put it in a hot spot, but if you put it directly on the fire, the outside burns while the inside is still doughy. All right, so here we are. 
Ah, the Laverne and Shirley County National Park. No, Laverne and Laverne County RV Park. And we're just waking up. It's a little after 10 in the morning. I got the worst night's sleep ever. Ever. James decided he was going to wake up and crawl into bed with me and stick his knees in my chest and make sure I don't sleep. Uh, what do you do? It's part of being a dad. Um, 3 a.m., somebody was knocking on our door asking if we have their dog. That was weird. But, any heck, we're headed out today to some wildlife park in Bandon to look at animals. It feels like it's going to be a 90 degree day because it's 10 o'clock and it's almost 80. What's up with that? And I'm ready to go back to sleep. <laughs> the West Coast Game Park Safari is pretty much a petting zoo with some exotic animals thrown in. They sold ice cream cones filled with animal food at the door, which is pretty much a waste of money. The minute an animal knows you have food, they pretty much just grab it straight out of your hand. There were many animals you could see, including lions and tigers, and even a little bear you could pet. I suddenly got hungry for Thanksgiving dinner. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these goats sound like, not goats, they sound like humans trying to sound like goats. It's kind of funny how that works out, doesn't it?
I will admit I get a little sad at the chimps in the cages. I took this shot honestly just to see how long Rose would stand there holding a single pose. It was for a while too. Ooh, ooh, what a difference a day makes, huh? All right, so it's really chilly. It's Sunday morning. We're all just waking up. Now well, I'm awake. James is awake. Everyone else is kind of just laying there. Uh, yesterday in Bandon, it was uh, a beautiful day, but it was really, really windy. Uh, once we uh, kind of explored a little bit, it was just really super windy over there. <sighs> Anyway, uh, people are waking up around the campgrounds and they're uh, getting their stuff together because it's Sunday morning. People are getting ready to go home because they got to go to work tomorrow. Us, we, you can see my breath, we are headed to Ashland today for the main event of our vacation, so to speak. In Ashland, we're going to go see Crater Lake. We're going to go to uh, Wairika, California and walk around the uh, Shakespearean festival that is famous for uh, around Ashland. But today I woke up and there's all this low-lying fog everywhere. The sun is coming up right behind the camera and it, it'll burn all this fog off eventually. But uh, it's chilly out here. A bit, a wee bit nippy, you know. Ah, very, uh, very excited to get back on the road. This was a fun place to be. You know, I actually really I actually really liked it here. It was it was packed. I mean, there's just people everywhere. But you know what? Everybody was really respectful here. They were pretty quiet, uh, other than the other day when somebody knocked on our door to to see if our dog was in here, which made no sense. I, I mean, they just wanted to know if their dog was in our trailer. And I'm like, what? Go away. It's 3 a.m. Anyway, for the most part, as soon as it hit 10 o'clock, everybody just kind of just kept to themselves and didn't bother anybody and 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 it was pretty quiet we slept just fine i slept like a rock last night i could use another four hours <laughs> but that's always hmm. oh, excuse me but that's always the way it is you know i never get enough sleep father of three that's how it works but anyway we're gonna get packed up and we're gonna get ready to go we're gonna hit that road ashland here we come with a slight detour to Grants Pass, Oregon. We're going to go visit a, a cemetery and uh, take some more video there. <sighs> but I digress. All right, let's go. Ashland, here we come. Ah, oh, Ashland. What a time that was. But you're going to have to wait till next week. See you then.